Hello, everyone. I have so much to talk to you about, and I have no idea what any of it is. I never know what I'm going to talk about until I stand in front of this camera. I still don't know what I'm going to talk about today. There are a great deal of things I want to talk about. I want to talk about the way advertisers are blinding you. I want to talk about the way politicians are blinding you. I want to talk about the ways people are taking advantage of the culture in which you live and the fears in which you have. Have? Yeah, sure. To take advantage of you. To get your money from you. I want to talk about fake activism. I want to talk about rallying people against each other. I want to talk about all this kind of garbage that has been going on for far too long. I want to talk about hypocrisy. But if I'm being honest, it's getting excessively more and more difficult every single time I stand in front of this camera because it seems less and less are actually paying attention. So today, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about boiling frogs. Today I'm going to talk about boiling frogs and about how when you let things happen, you are enabling them to happen. Okay? Do you understand what I mean? Whenever you say the words, oh yeah, well, blank does it, or oh yeah, well, they've been doing it for so long, or what am I going to do about it, or any of that fucking shit, any of that kind of thing, you are the problem. Do you understand me? You are the problem. Oh, it's not a big deal. Who cares? It's not a big deal. It's subtle. Who cares? Really? You care that much about something this small? It's principle. Everybody all over the internet these days just jumps down each other's throat for any opportunity they can. People are being silenced. And because the world is so loud right now, nobody's fucking noticing. It's happened to me twice about a fucking charity that I wanted to start. It happened twice in the last two weeks. The first time, I went to a place here in Gu I went to a place in town called Ten Carden. They advertise as being extremely uh, a community-based, morally driven, socially conscious collective of people who rent a space. They have membership fees, and you can rent their space to do whatever you want. Have seminars, fundraising events, do a fucking dance recital, and I know people do all of those things. So what did I do? I went there with the intention of networking, paying their full price, networking with them, and try trying to start a real charity that really needs to be done. A real problem that nobody should be able to refute is a problem. What do you think they did when I got there? They turned me away. Wills and estates, final wishes, and the ignoring of said wishes in Canada, and almost certainly in the United States as well, and possibly other countries too. I'm all, I can only speak for sure to Canada. Are you ready for this? And the fact that so many of you know this and don't care is blowing my bloody mind. Did you know, if you wrote a will, you put your final wishes on paper and made me the executor, which means it was my job to do those things, I could completely ignore everything you said after you passed away and take everything from everyone you wanted it to go to. If I was the executor of your estate and you had children and it was my duty to give your children whatever you wanted to give them, and I ignored it? Tough shit for your kids. You're too dead to do anything about it. The police don't take it as a real crime. They take it as a breach of contract. And they tell you to hire a lawyer that's going to cost you between twenty dollars and $200,000 plus. Welcome to the fucking Canadian justice system, my friend. Breach of contract, they call it. You know what a contract is? A contract is a signed document between two parties. He never signed that document. That's not how wills work. Anyway, 
This is very obviously coming from a real place. So I go to ten. I go to this place, Ten Carden, and I tell them this is my intention. And do you know what the owner tells me? the The woman working at the at the desk downstairs, she says, "One second, I'll go up and I'll get the owner, and I'll have her come down, and she'll give you a tour and take your membership fee and talk you through everything." I'm like, oh, great, that sounds great. The person comes back down, and you know what they say to me? They say, "Yeah, they actually said you'd be better off at the library." And I asked them, I said, are you turning me away right now? They didn't care. It's faux activism. It's false activism for the sake of profit. And it's not the only place I've seen it. Not even a little bit. And do you know what happened when I went on my local Facebook group and announced that this had happened to me? First, people started attacking me. All I said was, I heard Ten Carden is a place you can go if you have a charity and a cause that you wish to start to find like-minded people to work together as a community to better the world. I, I heard wrong. And then I explained the story. And people came, like, attacked me hard. There was one woman in particular who came after me saying, oh, no, Ten Carden does great work there. It's about um, the transgender issues and race issues and yada, yada, yada. And I said... See, they deleted this, so I can't even show you the comments, but it was bloody ridiculous. I just kept saying, I'm not talking about race and gender. I'm talking about the fact that Ten Carden is fake. They are faux activism. They only use, they only do anything, they only do anything with the subject matters that are currently sexy, that are currently selling on television. Like, race gender, sexuality, and do you know what the person's comment back to me was? Oh, another white guy who doesn't like gender politics. How surprising. What in the actual fuck? They were trying so hard to be offended that they debated me about whether or not people should people's wills should be enforced. They debated me about that. Really let that sink in. If you wrote a will, and I was the executor of it, and I stole everything, and you go online talking about it, and people started debating you, talking about how gender was important. What the fuck? Okay, so that's one. Let's move on to number dose. This one happened because I actually was extremely motivated to start this charity. I still am. I'm still considering how to work it. I'm still working towards that. I'm building to that in future. So a friend of mine was on Facebook on a group, one of those, you know, buy and sell kind of things. And she saw that somebody had posted that they were looking for two or three charity causes to support and that they were going to hold a little party. And so my friend sends me this link at this person's page. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I go to it. And I send them a message. I say, so I understand you're interested in uh, supporting a couple of charities. And they talk to me for a while. They're like, yeah, you know, I, I raised X number of dollars. And they said that they were with this company. And I looked up the company right away. It's a, it's a build-it-yourself jewelry assembly company. She's basically an Avon salesperson for jewelry, making commission. So that already had my guard up. I don't know why I did that. I guess I'm a bull. <laughs> <laughs> that already had my guard up. I'm already not feeling so mellow about this whole affair. I have a really good bullshit detector. So I go, I'm talking to her. And she says, yeah, last time I made, I, I can make $500 for a cause or a hostess. I say, wait, a hostess? And one thing you need to realize is that every single word a person chooses to use especially when they are advertising a business to you and want something from you, they've chosen on purpose. Whether consciously or subconsciously, they, have, they all serve a purpose. So when that woman said to me, I made $500 for the host of the party, they were trying to capitalize on my personal greed. This is nothing to do with charity. This person has no charity in mind. Do you know what happened when I linked her the page for uh, the Deanna Ron Fund? 
radio silence. Completely nothing. Gone. And see, that would have been fine if she was advertising as a business. But she wasn't. She was advertising as somebody who wanted to do fundraising. With just a, she just so happens to have this skill to throw in. No. Absolutely not. And there's more. There's a lot more. I could go on for days about this kind of thing. People have their own causes, and when you step up with another cause, they stomp their feet and start bloody crying. And it's making me sick. It's making me sick. People looking at each other and saying, I don't care about black rights issues because um, there's people being, there's journalists being executed, or vice versa. Or I don't care about mental health issues because women are in trouble. Why can't we care about all of it? Why, do, why does one cause have to be worse than the other? Why do, why do you only have to support one thing? <sighs> Activism has become a crutch. Activism has become a tool to be used against us. Remember that Pepsi ad? Do you remember that? With the Jenner girl, woman? I forget, Caitlyn or the other one. The, one of the Jenners. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You remember that? You remember how pissed people got? Because they were so obviously trying to... like They were so obviously trying to sell activism. Sell Pepsi with activism and its social causes. Remember how pissed everyone got at that? Do you remember the fucking Gillette ad? Remember how very few people got pissed at that? Well, a lot of people did. But it wasn't the same kind of general outrage. It was like a person against person. It's bad, it's good. <laughs> Versus that Pepsi shit where everybody could see right through that transparent garbage. And it's just going to keep getting worse. Now that Gillette has been covered time and time again for that all over the place and I'm not helping. <laughs> now that this has worked, guaranteed you see this has become a trend. Sort of like the whole, um, duh, come on. Old Spice. You remember the Old Spice? I'm on a horse. Like, all that kind of, like, random shit, and then how all of a sudden all the commercials started doing that? This is happening now. How long am I at? I'm almost ten minutes. This is happening right now with advertisers. I'm sick and tired of this shit being used as a weapon. I'm sick and tired of charity being used for profit. Especially when they dare look me in the face and question my judgment. Correction. Especially when people like that dare look me in the face and question my fucking integrity. We need to wake up. We're being taken advantage of. Big time. Companies are pulling this shit on us. You want to see another example of something a company is pulling? I've clearly moved out of the realm of charitable work now and more along the lines of fucking pay attention. Check this out. See this? This is my tablet. Well, it was my mother's. I'm going to go and I'm going to show you Netflix right now. And I'm going to guess. Actually, let's see. How many of you think you know what I'm about to show you and why I'm so upset right now? How many of you think you know the dirty little tiny insignificant thing that Netflix is doing to manipulate us? It doesn't matter how many of you guessed it right or wrong. That's It was mostly rhetorical. But here we go. This took me almost three weeks to figure out. Three weeks, I even tweeted Netflix about it, and they didn't give me the answer. They just gave me some flowery dance around bullshit. How do you watch a specific movie? Where's the search button? Where'd it go? Can you find it? No, you can't. Either you already know where it is, or you can't see it. See, it used to be up here. Why do you think it used to be up at the top, where nobody would fucking think to look? Do you see the structure of this? The structure of this is so that you want to go down. They intentionally did this so you want to go down. When search function was up, it was already asinine. Where do you think it is now? Here, let me show you. Let me show you. See that cast button right there? It's fucking invisible right beside it. It's fucking invisible. There's an invisible search button. Do you know why that is? So that you have to go sorting through this and you constantly just get lost in the junk of Netflix. 
They are manipulating us. And I'm fucking sick of it. See, it's all these subtle little things like this. How many times in the last couple of years have you been advertised to and had no idea you were being advertised to? How many times has an ad come off like they were just some person presenting a thing to you as if they were interested? What happened to truth in advertising? What happened... Remember when you were a kid and you used to hear that rumor about the person suing because there weren't actually two cups of raisins in the raisin bran? I'm going to look that up on Snopes because I always assumed it wasn't really true. But shit like that used to fucking happen. You used to not be able to say shit like this. You used to not be able to do shit like this. Nobody would get away with it. Remember when you used to Google something and the first search result was almost always what you wanted? And now the first search result, the first three or four search results are ads that may or may not be marketed as ads. Here's another thing. Why would you ever see major success on YouTube or Twitter? Why would YouTube or Twitter ever want you to succeed when they sell your views? They sell advertising space. They have a they have a boost button on all these platforms where you just press a button, you pay extra money, and it shows it to more people. Is that not the essence of dead net neutrality? These things, they can't take them on a grand scheme. So what are they doing? They're taking them website by website, one little piece at a time. It's called boiling the frog. You want to boil a frog? You don't throw it in boiling water. It'll jump back out. You put it in normal water and you slowly turn the heat up on that shit and it will boil and die. And guess what? I'm fucking sick of boiling.